Hello everyone and welcome to the lab. In this video we're going to be doing an acid ester hydrolysis. As the name might suggest, we are going to be hydrolyzing an ester using an acid catalyst. We are going to convert acetyl salicylic acid into salicylic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid is commonly found as aspirin and in this video I'm going to refer to it as ASA because that is quite a mouthful. Now, some of you might not know what an ester is. It's basically uh, a carboxylic acid, which in this case came from the acetic acid, this is an acetyl group here, has reacted with something that has a hydroxyl group, which would be the salicylic acid with an OH group here, hydroxyl group, and it's formed an ester bond. So you can see that ASA here Here's the salicylic acid part, linked by an ester bond to an acetyl group. And in this case, water is going to hydrolyze it. So one thing will have an OH group and the other one will too, and then I'll completely consume the water. Using an acid catalyst, in this case hydrochloric acid. Now once we hydrolyze this, we'll be left with salicylic acid, which is what we're looking for, and acetic acid, which is just cheap and easy to get so I won't be uh, trying to isolate that. I have 45.22 grams of ASA which is approximately 0.251 moles and that will react with water using an acid catalyst to generate hopefully 34.67 grams of salicylic acid which is also 0.251 moles. Um, as you can see from the double arrows here, it's actually an equilibrium, so the reaction can go both ways. It can go this way and generate salicylic acid, or it can go this way and generate acetyl salicylic acid again. But it strongly favors this side, and the reaction nearly goes to completion, so this doesn't matter a lot. It'll almost goes like 90%. I have already added 45.22 grams of ASA to a 1 liter round bottom flask. And in addition to this, we're going to require some water. I have approximately 500 milliliters here. The amount doesn't need to be that precise, but close to 500 milliliters will be okay. Now it's time for acid catalyst, which is hydrochloric acid. I just added the hydrochloric acid. It was approximately 12 milliliters, and I diluted it with about 100 milliliters of water to keep it from fuming in the lab. So that makes a total of approximately 600 milliliters of water added and 12 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. It was 31.45%. Don't forget to add a stir bar either. I will now move the condenser into place. I fitted the condenser and now we'll start the flow of water. That looks pretty good to me and Just a little submersible pump in there. There we go. Um, the flask is suspended just a bit above the hot plate. And we will start stirring. And I'll start heating as well. We're going to bring it to a boil and reflux it. Uh, after a long time heating, because I should have used an oil bath, it's finally started refluxing. You can see it dripping back in. Now we're going to let it reflux for half an hour, 25 minutes, just to let it reach equilibrium. And it should be clear because there, there are no solids anymore, everything's dissolved, but there's a little bit of starch left over from the pills I extracted the aspirin from. And it won't cause that much of a problem, but it's still annoying. So, 
was like, oh no. We're 20 minutes into the reflex. Still going strong. And the flask has cleared up significantly. That's a good sign. Hopefully we'll get some good product. I've insulated it with some aluminum foil because uh, an air bath, well that's what this is called, is not very efficient. And I want to be good for the environment, so save some energy. That's good. You should use an oil bath, at least for this large amount. 600 milliliters of water is quite a bit. But the oil bath is not... It gave me a bad time, and you know... But, yeah, almost done. 25 minutes now. So I've just turned off the heating. And we can let it cool now. Of course now. It's a nice vortex. I love magnetic stirring. I don't know how I survive without it. I think that it cleared up because the cloudiness was from starch. And starch is, as you may know, uh, a bunch of glucose is linked together and starch can be hydrolyzed into glucose uh, especially in the presence of heat and acid so I'm thinking that it just got hydrolyzed into glucose which is very soluble in water I transferred everything from the flask to this one liter beaker and you can see from the solid in here as soon as the solution touched the cold beaker it precipitated a bunch of salicylic acid because it's a very saturated solution and that's unfortunate because we won't have as nice crystals but oh well you can already smell the acetic acid and I'll just leave this till the morning because it's getting late it's the morning now it's been about 12 hours this is cooled down to room temperature which in the lab is about 12 C pretty chilly, but a lot of crystals. They're pretty small, sadly. Breaking up all the solids. I'll let this settle and then pour off as much water as I can. It turns out I can pour off virtually all of the water. So I think I'm just going to skip filtering and just rinse this with water, mix it around, let it settle, and then pour off the water because gravity filtration really sucks. Oh, I hate it so much. Washed with about 300 milliliters of water. I forgot to mention, this waste that we generate from washing the salicylic acid can just go down the drain because nothing's really that bad. Salicylic acid can go down the drain, so can acetic acid, and you shouldn't pour concentrated hydrochloric acid down the drain, but the 12 milliliters we added isn't significant compared to the volume of water, and it's, so it's heavily diluted. These crystals only smell slightly of acetic acid, so I think I'll just wash them once more and let them dry then. I squished down the crystals using the back of a spoon to get the last of the water out of them. And now we will transfer them to this large evaporating dish for drying. Put the crystals or some water on the hot plate, it's just gonna dry it in a steam bath. I'm heating on the steam bath and not just directly on the hot plate because salicylic acid can decompose at elevated temperatures and that's not, not ideal. If you're not sure whether something's dry yet, get something cold like this watch glass which is at room temperature and hold it over the thing that you're trying to dry. You can see any water vapor coming off will condense, and you can see that the watch glass is fogged up. And you can check it periodically until 
nothing else comes off and then you'll know that it's dry. Here is the final product. 30.12 grams of a fluffy white crystalline powder which should be relatively pure salicylic acid. An 87% yield based on the ASA and I'm pretty happy with it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.